Education, Barrister Mrs. Theodora, esteemed gentlemen of the Five Jumps and the Goi Mentor, and I'm Director of Program CEO of the Anambra State ICT Agency, Barrister Mrs. Theodora Opi Ibebe, MNI, for the opportunity to address this esteemed audience on a topic of critical importance. This year's theme, Digitization of Work Processes in the Public Service, a Gateway to Efficient Resource Utilization and National Development, is apt as it underscores the transformative potential of incorporating digital technologies into the operations of the public service for optimal productivity. By digitization of work processes, we mean the integration of digital tools and technologies into what you may call traditional work processes or analog work systems. In the case of Anambra, this refers to the conscious effort of Governor Chuko Machal Soludo CFR to digitize work processes in the state a shift from paper services to digital services for enhanced efficiency, accuracy, and speed of tasks that were ab initio performed manually. Digitization helps us maximize the utilization of resources within the public service, ensuring that time, manpower, and financial resources are employed in the most effective and efficient manner. The concept and process of digitization involves digitalization. Digitization converts analog information into digital form, while digitization, while digitalization transforms processes using digital technologies. Digitization is about converting information while digitalization improves processes and creates new opportunities. Digitalization and digitalization go hand in hand in order to transform organizations into digital enterprises, allowing for more agility and performance improvements. The theme also acknowledges that digitalizing public service processes plays a role in the comprehensive development and progress of the nation by enhancing technology to foster positive socioeconomic results, improve service delivery, and contribute to the broader developmental objectives of the country. As the Managing Director of the Anambra State ICT Agency, this year's team resonates deeply with the transformative journey championed by Mr. Governor which we are undertaking in the Anambra State ICT Agency. I am particularly thrilled to be part of this significant event and to share our journey towards digitizing work processes in the public service. A testament of Governor Soludo's vision of everything technology and technology everywhere. In alignment with the visionary goals of our esteemed Governor, who is committed to transforming Anambra into a technologically advanced state, we have embarked on a comprehensive journey of digital transformation, starting with the civil service. Recognizing the pivotal role of technology in enhancing the efficiency of the state workforce, we conducted a survey of available digital tools in the state. To our surprise, the findings revealed a stark reality. Less than 200 functional computers were available for a workforce exceeding 10,000 individuals. In response to this digital gap, we proposed the procurement of digital tools, specifically computers and laptops, which Mr. Governor promptly approved leading to the procurement and distribution of 200 state-of-the-art computers and laptops in the first phase. This marks the beginning of a phased distribution strategy that will continue throughout the administration's tenure. So, 
expect more work tools come 2024 and beyond. However, our commitment to digitization goes beyond mere hardware provision. We recognize the importance of equipping our workforce with the necessary skills for the digital age. Therefore, prior to the distribution, select civil servants underwent comprehensive training in digital literacy, which is ongoing and continuous. Subsequently, Anambra adopted the second level domain approved by the federal government as the minimum standard for all states. As a government agency mandated to drive the e-government initiatives of the state government, we have been implementing the migration from generic, from generic emails, such as Yahoo, Gmail, etc., to the at anambrastate.gov.ng. Today, we are glad to announce that individuals in the state workforce now have the official email addresses ending with at anambrastate.gov.ng, facilitating seamless communication and collaboration. Let me seize this opportunity to request civil servants that are yet to activate theirs to do so as soon as possible. You can walk into the ICT agency anytime to request your own official email. Remember to come along with approved means of identification. Another milestone in our efforts towards the digitization of the workforce was the launch of the EID card for civil servants and government employees on Friday, June 2nd, 2023. This initiative not only aims to strengthen identity management, but also streamlines the recognition of civil servants, providing an efficient means of identification, much like systems in advanced nations. This innovative card enables easy identification on the go and verification of genuine government employees. It ushers in an era of transparency, accountability, and enhanced civil service delivery. Civil servants can now download their EID cards on Google Play Store. In addressing the critical need for a centralized data repository, we introduced the Anambra Cloud, a robust cloud infrastructure for data preservation and protection. The absence of a state-owned cloud had left the state vulnerable to data loss, service disruptions, and financial risks associated with external consultants. Alambra Cloud is not just a technological solution, it is a strategic imperative that ensures our control and ownership of digital assets, guarding against data loss and fostering a resilient and sustainable digital ecosystem for Anambra State. It represents our commitment to overcoming challenges, embracing innovation, and building a future where technology truly serves as a gateway to efficient resource utilization and national development. There is the ongoing development of the platform that allows for automation in budget processes by the Ministry of Budget and Economic Planning in collaboration with the State ICT Agency. Prior to the Soludo-led administration, the state was operating a complete manual system. The innovative features of this system include intelligence and auto-summation, which is expected to save time and cost, improve transparency and accountability, and help to keep users updated on the approved budget, thereby encouraging the appropriate management of state funds. Earlier on in his administration, Governor Charles Soludo had taken bold steps to accelerate the state's digital transformation journey by enhancing digital assets. To further demonstrate his profound commitment to enhancing these digital assets, Governor Soludo initiated modern strategies aimed at reversing infrastructure decline in the states. If you look around the states, you will discover people laying fiber dots. Plans are also ongoing to establish an internet exchange point in the states. This will not only boost internet speed, but also make internet access more affordable 
and available for all. In conclusion, therefore, it is crucial for Adam State Public and Civil Service to embrace technology and digitization to enhance effective, efficient, and quality public and civil service delivery system. This is more so as the developmental status of a nation or state is largely dependent on the effectiveness or ineffectiveness of its public service. Finally, as we celebrate the State Civil Service Day, let us reflect on the strides Mr. Governor has made in ensuring the digitization of work processes, acknowledge the challenges we have overcome, and look forward to a future where collective efforts drive Anambra State to new heights of technological excellence. Thank you all for listening. Chukuma Fred Abata, MD, CEO Anambra State ICT Agency. Yeah, yeah. Yes, government of the poorest of the poor, us and the poor, will not only breathe, but they will get up and run. Your civil servants, prompt refuse collections, planting of trees, but a place to come, work, live and enjoy, a smart mega city, prosperous homeland, the solution is indeed here. Ndiolo Ibo, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo CFR. May I run on the press of previously established protocol and greet everybody. I must, however, acknowledge once in a year celebration, the civil service day celebrations. I pray God, as has the priest, that it will all go down very well in Jesus' name. Amen. My being here is like a homecoming. The last time I was here, this very place, was when I was privileged to host the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, for the commissioning of the magnificent secretariat built by the then state governor, his Excellency, Mr. Pitoli, and made in honor of the first African district officer, a highly celebrated and incomparable administrative officer, Chief Jerome Odoji. It was a day of joy and fulfillment for me as I was leaving the service, having served God and country and my state to the best of my ability, hopefully satisfactorily. Today, thanks to the head of service, I am back meeting the state governor for the very first time since his inauguration into office. Congratulations, Your Excellency. I would say, when I met His Excellency, he may not have remembered. I met him first in his residence at midnight. 
Excellency, for finding it appropriate and necessary to be with your workers and to celebrate with them their civil service day. The civil servants who, even on these days of unimagined hardship, have continued to work assiduously enough to be deemed worthy of recognition and award of excellence. You should be doubly proud of yourselves that you have held your heads above water and not allow the current excruciating problems to eclipse or extinguish your efforts and positive disposition towards your job and your determination to give of your best. Finally, I say to all of you, civil servants, not to see solution as a slogan or catchphrase, but generally as everybody's action plan backed by an inner driving force to tackle problems until a successful end is achieved. From this perspective, there are problems at your workplace in the form of tasks, assignments, even routine ones, and you must all become solutionists. When faced with a task, ask yourself, what needs to be done? How should it be done? Resolve to do it, and apply your competence, tackle and solutionize it. That is, you deal with it until you bring it to this, a successful conclusion. For example, when a male needs to be fired and, and, and for action, don't say, I can't find the original file, I can't find the new file, I can't even find anything, and throw up your hand and leave it there. No. You must solutionize it. You must Solutionize the problem by opening a temporary file, filing the main file, filing the main and sending it off for relevant action because the main itself may contain sufficient information with which the action can be commenced and even concluded. This will make you a solutionist. So I have a formula. Problem, what's a favorable disposition determination, effort, competence, successful end, which is a solution. You see, Nikke, we are survivors. I get what you see, I we shall all survive. A problem, no, no, no. Always find a solution to a problem. So this is not wrong, go for me. Solution appertains to everybody. It's our responsibility. Even in your homes, because because a man is built to tackle problems, solutionize and prevail. The head of service of Anambra State presented on the occasion of the 2023 Public Service Day celebration. I am honored to stand before you on this official occasion of the 2023 Public Service Day. Permit me to extend my warm greetings to our special guest, the Governor of Anambra State, Professor Charles Chukwu Masuludo CFR. The Chairman of the occasion, our honor, Barrister Mrs. Ngozi Melikong, the former head of service of Anambra State, and all the distinguished guests here present. I also recognize the presence of the permanent secretaries, the directors of the service, and the entire workforce. You are all welcome. The theme of this year's Public Service Day is digitalization of work processes in the public service a gateway to efficient resources utilization and national development. This theme encapsulates the transformative journey of the Anambra State Public Service towards leveraging digital technologies to enhance service delivery and drive our nation's progress. I want to remind every person here that it is the same theme that has been celebrated at the national level and in all the 35 other states of the Federation. So Anambra is the 36th state of the Federation that 
hinges to uh, this year's celebration on the same theme. The state of the service. Consequence upon the Executive Council's approval of the Anambra State Civil Service Strategy and the Implementation Plan 2022 to 2025. The public service in the state has been one of growth, innovation, and dedication to excellence. I am proud to share with you the remarkable achievements of the Office of the Head of Service, which have contributed significantly to the advancement of our public service. In collaboration with the Anambra State Information and Communication Technology Agency, ANSICTA, we organized training programs for 100 civil servants in information communication technology, ICT. This training initiative was aimed at equipping our workforce with the necessary skills and knowledge to navigate the digital landscape. Mr. Governor supported this initiative by providing computers for use by some public servants. By enhancing their digital literacy, we have empowered our public servants to embrace emerging technologies and effectively contribute to the digitalization of work processes. We have also trained 30 civil servants on procurement management, environmental and social standards, funded by the Center of Excellence in Sustainable Procurement, Environmental and Social Standards of the Federal University of Technology, OWERI. And uh, I want everyone here to know that civil servants that benefited from that training did not pay a dime. So it was at no cost to the state government. <laughs> Furthermore, our collaboration with ANSICTA has resulted in the successful launch of the e-identification scheme for state public servants. This scheme has revolutionized administrative processes by ensuring the integrity and security of personnel records through digital identification. The implementation of this scheme has enhanced efficiency, transparency, and accountability within our public service. Recognizing the importance of organizational efficiency, we undertook a comprehensive staff mapping and bifurcation exercise. This exercise allowed us to review and streamline the functions of staff in the newly created Budget Implementation Office of the Ministry of Finance, as well as in the Ministries of Petroleum, Industry, Housing, and the Office of the Special Advisor on Trades and Markets. Through this endeavor, we have optimized the allocation of human resources, fostering greater productivity and effectiveness within these departments. I am delighted to announce that the last Civil Service Commission conducted the 2021 and 2022 promotion interviews for our deserving civil servants before the end of tenure of the commission. We await the constitution of a new commission which will release the 2021 and 2022 promotions to give way for that of 2023 and 2024. These promotions start as a testament to our commitment to meritocracy and the recognition of the hard work and dedication exhibited by our employees. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Governor for approving these promotion interviews and I appeal to him to graciously approve the conduct of the 2023 and 2024 interviews early next year to end the era of areas of promotion interviews. These promotions are crucial for boosting the morale and motivation of our workers and further drive their commitment to public service excellence. In our pursuit of enhancing the welfare and productivity of our public servants, we have secured the approval of the State Executive Council for the introduction of Buy Your Own Device Scheme, BYOD. This scheme developed in collaboration with MTN and First Bank will enable public servants in the state to own ICT devices under a flexible payment plan of 36 months. By enabling our employees to possess personal devices, 
we will, significant, we will significantly enhance their efficiency, productivity, and digital inclusiveness within the public service. This scheme is completely optional and not mandatory. Additionally, we are at the moment undergoing mandatory six months conversion course for motor drivers to mechanics and other technical staff. This course aims at upgrading their skills, improving safety standards, and aligning their competencies with emerging technologies and best practices. By investing in the professional development of our technical workforce, we elevate the overall quality of service delivery across the state. To promote accountability and curb corruption, we have set up the Anambra State Anti-Corruption Strategy Desk in all the MDAs and local government areas in the state. The members of the committee, in collaboration with EU ROLA, have been conducting sensitization programs and monitoring corruption in the MDAs and local government areas. At this juncture, I want to recognize the presence of Mrs. Josephine Honor, who is the person that has been helping us uh, with uh, the ANSAT strategy. Josephine, thank you so much. And they extend our heartfelt appreciation to EU Roland and the British organizations. CSOs have been going on courtesy visits to the stakeholders on the implementation as well as monitoring the progress of the ANSAX program in the state. An index study of the contributory pension scheme has taken place, and in a short while, the State Executive Council will receive a memo on the way forward. The same is the situation with the operations of the Indiolo Community Bank. What we have noted is the fact that this administration has supported the building of low-cost houses for civil servants in Anambra State. The Memorandum of Understanding between iConnect Cooperative Investment Limited and Anambra State Housing Corporation is ready for the party's signatures. As soon as this is done, there will be a sensitization to educate workers on how to benefit from the scheme. I also want to use this opportunity to appreciate the presence of the MD of the Anambra State Housing Corporation, who is the one facilitating this project. Um, Chike Ayon, MD Housing Corporation, I got my card for you. We are grateful, in conjunction with Anambra State Business Agency, ASBA, we have conducted seminars to enlighten the workforce on the possibility of registering cooperative societies so that they can access loans from ASBA for small-scale businesses they can do outside official working hours to make their lives better. We encourage all civil servants to take advantage of this and have a second source of income. We are grateful to Mr. Governor for the prompt payment of salaries pensions and gratuities in Anambra State, contrary to the position in some states of the Federation where salaries, pensions and gratuities are not paid regularly. We are particularly happy that the areas that accumulated between 2018 and 2022 regarding gratuities are being betrayed as at this moment. Thank you, Mr. Governor. We equally appreciate Mr. Governor for paying the 2023 annual leave allowances to all workers of the state. I'm sure you received your alert. Is there anybody here that has not received his or her 2023? We have all received our leave allowances. Mr. Governor, thank you once again. We are grateful to you for this payment. In the same vein, we thank Mr. Governor for being among the first governors to implement cash awards to cushion the effects of field subsidy removal. Issues, challenges, and our appeal to Mr. Governor. While celebrating our achievements, we must also acknowledge the issues and challenges that we are facing. I humbly appeal to Mr. Governor 
to graciously approve the conduct of the 2023 and 2024 promotion interviews to take place by the first quarter of the year 2024. To make this realizable, sir, we pledge with you, Mr. Governor, to appoint the chairman and members of the State Civil Service Commission as soon as possible. I express my gratitude to Mr. Governor for reviving the Public Service Mass Transit Scheme. However, I request the subsidization of fuel and addition of more buses to the scheme to cater for the increasing transportation needs of our public servants. Mr. Governor, sir, these buses that we have, we have four of them. One is grounded at the moment, and they are all, um, I think, about 12 years old. We will appreciate if Mr. Yes, yes, Mr. Governor will appreciate if the state government will add more buses to ease the transportation problems of the workforce. a significant challenge regarding the non-provision of official cars for permanent secretaries and directors in the state. We kindly request your attention to this matter and urge you to consider providing cars as essential work tools to enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of the services rendered by these categories of staff. I extend my appreciation to Mr. Governor for approving the training of 100 civil servants on ICT, I appeal to Mr. Governor to approve more training programs in 2024, especially those aimed at further deepening the digitalization of the public service and introducing the new procedures for performance management as provided by the new public service rules. May I draw Mr. Governor's attention to the maintenance needs of the state secretariat complex the furniture, electrical systems, plumbing work, and water channels require immediate attention. Some portions of the fences have collapsed and need to be put in place. At the moment, Mr. Governor, water does not run at the Secretariat because there is no power supply to the boreholes. I appeal to Mr. Governor for turnaround maintenance efforts to address these issues promptly. <laughs> Lastly, the need to install solar panels and CCTV cameras in and around the secretary cannot be overemphasized. There have been thefts attributable to the palpable darkness in and around the secretary at night. I promise that. Mr. Governor, your consistent demonstration of care and dedication towards Anambra State workers through both your words and actions have left an indelible impression. In the short time you have been with us, your unwavering commitment to the well-being of not just the workers, but all the Anambra as reflected in the development of different sectors such as infrastructure, education, health, sports and new development is commendable. We wholeheartedly pledge our complete dedication and support to you and your government. Furthermore, we solemnly promise to work diligently to ensure the effective and meticulous implementation of your programs and policies which are aimed at transforming our beloved state into a prosperous and livable place for all its residents. Awards. One of the notable events of today's occasion will be the acknowledgement and presentation of prestigious merit awards to 33 officers from different ranks who have been nominated by their superiors and colleagues for their outstanding performance in the past one year. I congratulate all the recipients for their dedication and their exemplary service. I encourage them to maintain their high standards and to continue their remarkable efforts. To the remaining workers, I urge you to persist in giving your best in your respective roles. Your efforts will not go unnoticed, as good deeds are always rewarded in due time.
In conclusion, I express my profound gratitude to all our guests for joining us to celebrate the 2023 Public Service Day as we reflect on the theme, Digitalization of Work Processes in the Public Service, a gateway to efficient resources utilization and national development. Let us remain committed to harnessing the power of digital technologies to drive our public service forward. Together, we can achieve an efficient, transparent, and citizen-centric public service that contributes to the sustainable development of Panama State and our great nation, Nigeria. Thank you, and may this celebration be a resounding success. For us to rise and observe a minute's silence in honor of a past governor of Anambra State, a past governor of Anambra State, I will say who was governor 91 92. I remember after the creation of Anambra, the first civilian governor way that we had, I, I, I remember that, um, or the old Anambra even. And, and that's Dr. His Excellency Dr. Tukwe Mecca Ezifen. Dr. Ezifen passed on yesterday evening. I granted an interview to channels a moment ago and I communicated the fact that Anambra wants. This year alone, we have lost two of our former governors and made their souls and souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. I think we're going to talk about the funeral to come of what has been done and the positive and uh, I looked at the challenges and requests section that was very, very short. So I have very little to say. But first is to congratulate all of you. Congratulate all of you and to thank you for your dedicated service to Anambra State. We must never forget the purpose of this day. And this is the day that we have to celebrate you. We appreciate you for your tireless service for Anambra State. If we have done much, whatever we've done, we have all done it together. This public service is a very, very key component of the delivery. In fact, without the public service, as a service sector, there will be no public, there will be no service to the people of the state. Whether we are going, talking about teachers, training our children, or our schools winning prizes, national and international, and our children showing up all over the place, whether we are talking on um, teachers, head teachers, principals, would have won awards at the national level, or we are talking about whether it is ICT, whether it is in the power sector, or we are building infrastructure over 400 kilometers of road going on simultaneously, and so on, or in the health sector, and so on. None of this will be possible without a very dedicated public service. And we will need to appreciate you and say thank you, and thank you, and thank you again. That's the major purpose here. It's also a moment to reflect on where we are coming from and the road ahead. And, and of course, you are at the theme for this year staying on digitalization. That's really the way to go. We've begun steps in that direction. The trainings, ICT training, some of you received, and there will still be many more. I understand when we are doing the digital training for about 20,000 youths, Many public servants booked on that online training and participated. 
you know, acquiring some digital skills. There are now now phase two that is deepening those skills in the area of coding and deepening their digital skills. We also hope that some of our public servants are part of that. So the theme, part of it is discussing about work tools and how to be even more productive in the years ahead. And so, I'm glad, I'm happy, and I want to believe that we must have benefited immensely from the lecture that was given earlier. But whatever it is, pay attention to the theme of this year's uh, Public Service Day, because that is the ladder of opportunity for the future. It is the ladder of opportunity for the future. If you don't have that, then how can you operate? CBT, computer-based uh, tests, is now, that's the order of the day. And sooner or later, and I will talk about that in a moment, we will also be increasingly, we we'll provide laptops and some other uh, work tools, tech, um, work tools to our staff, but we will also be increasing the same even next year. We've got in 200, and I am hoping that in the year ahead, that will be at least 1,000 to add to the 200 that we have. And that's going to be helping to, you know, rev up multiples in terms of the skills of our workforce and getting you fit for purpose. Fit for purpose. And even when you do the trainings and the um, promotion exams and interviews and so on, so we're talking about your technical skills. Because today, in today's world, it is tech. If you don't have, if you are not tech savvy, you can use even your phone and digital skills. Then I'm sorry, it's difficult to be productive this day and age. So, today, this year's um, uh, uh, theme is very, uh, very important, is a life topic. It's a topic that will continue to live with you every day, not just within service, when you are in service. It's a topic that will live with you throughout your entire life. Because today and tomorrow belong to technology and digital scale happen to be the way of life. It's just not just to be able to send this up. It's increasingly going to be a way of life. So I thank and congratulate you. Now, we talk about the State of the Union. I listened to the um, compare Shedra, you know, talking about some of the things that we have tried to do where the country is, I mean, where we are going. Yes, Nigeria as a country, and the national economy, yes, has in some challenges. Most of these challenges are legacy issues. Legacy issues in the sense that they were inherited, they were, and some of them are avoidable. Uh, actually, some of the things that we are going through. Today you have double digit inflation, eaten up into the real wages, the exchange rate, depreciation. But these things are largely the legacies of some of our self-inflicted policy missteps. I have spoken about this publicly, not just now, but for a long time. As far back as November 2015, I have spoken and I kept speaking about this process of the kind of monetary exchange rate regime that we had, and that it was a road to nowhere. And today, and in the last couple of months, and over a year now, the chicken has come to roost. Just like I said, you cannot pour a drum of water on a rock and expect that it will not be wet. You could not print and pour out more than 22 
almost 33 trillion naira backed by nothing and put it in the system and you expect inflation to remain the same and the exchange rate to remain the same. It just doesn't work. But we've got to deal with this. So while we're dealing with the inflation thing, I, I need to talk about it because we, the public servants, bear a, a, a sizable brunt of this, of the consequences. Because when inflation is rising, those of us with weak fixed income, fixed wages, suffer the consequences the most. Those with fixed income suffer the consequences the most. And as former governor of Central Bank, I used to say it, I knew it, and while I was governor, we made strenuous efforts to make sure that we fought inflation to a standstill. And that's why under my tenure as governor of Central Bank, for 24 consecutive months, for 24 consecutive months, we had inflation at single digits, less than 10 percent, and we kept it there for more than 24 consecutive months, as it were. Exchange rate, we had exchange rate continued appreciating from about 138 to the dollar that I met it until about 112 naira to one dollar then, before the global financial crisis came, and we saved for Nigeria accumulated foreign reserves which I met at $10 billion the day I assumed the office, and we raised our foreign reserve to all-time historical high of approximately $63 billion. And even after paying off $12 billion to pay off our external debt, and facing unprecedented global financial crisis in 2008-2009, I left office and left about $45 billion. And since then, not one dollar has been added on top of it. Thus, we must get back to some fundamentals. So the national thing, why the federal government is battling with its own, battling to fix back the economy and put it back on an evil keel, which all of us have a duty to contribute, to build, because we have got one economy. When inflation is rising, it's rising everywhere. When exchange rate depreciates, it's depreciating everywhere. But we must all fold our sleeves and get to work. While at the federal level, here in Anambra, we must continue to do our utmost best to contribute to national transformation. We've got to do our own. Whatever is happening there, we do our own. I had the uh, compare talk, uh, the head of service talk about the fact that in some states they are owing uh, salaries and pensions and gratuities and so on and so forth. Yes, before we came here, those who retire from public service, civil service, were owed four years of their gratuity, and those in local government were also owed four years of their gratuity. But we say no. These people who have put in 30, some 35 years, and so on and so forth of service, 60 years and over, we are hoping on that retirement benefit, on that gratuity. And that is why, since I came, we made it a rule that everybody who retired under the, who was retired since we came, we we'll make sure we we'll pay you your graduating. And we have come back from 2018, and we are gradually paying those arrears. Because we must. That's an obligation that we have to our workers who have, you know, worked tirelessly to keep our states going. At least you can go there. I remember before I came, I, I, until when you see people owed one month, two months, six months, one year salary, or you see those who retire and they are owed gratuity for one, two, three, four years, then you understand why we must never take what we have for granted. But 
So far as I sit here, you can take those alerts and whatever for granted. I want to say this and I tell you that you can take that for what? For granted. On the states where we are together and working with you, we have remained focused. Focused on the five pillars, the five fingers of the Sonudo solution. The five pillars, security, law, and order. We're not relenting on that. We will keep fighting. We will keep fighting and getting our number more secured by each day. We're not relenting on that. The eight local government that were totally taken over by these food laws, now people can move around and sleep with their two eyes closed. We are coming. The second one, our infrastructure and economic transformation agenda. We are moving on all fronts in this regard. Infrastructure, you see what is going on? Ndenonoka. Ogolo needa afuzo. Needa anuife. Eda afuzo. Eus ili rono ni imegene. Oezi oku. On emenoka. Echoos emenoka koos emenoka all over country. All over the state. I learned I'm looking forward to going to our whole family. In Oka North. That's the end. And that's the people much of that local government has never seen it used to take people their testimonies even the reverend father was giving the testimony publicly recently he lived at Obo family and it used to take him three hours three and a half hours to come from Obo family to Oka here and during the rainy season his car will stop some places and he will have to trek for hours today from our, from our man C to our both family can now take you 15 to 18 minutes. And, and people there, I understand some elders who have never seen Tad Road in their life now get up and go to touch the Tad Road and say, Guy, I'm not going to have a moment and I'm going to have a moment and I'm going to have a at making sure that we leave no one behind. And we are very, very deliberate about it. So when you saw me, I don't know how many of you saw me on a boat to a boat family, uh, not to a boat family, to Olu Banasa. We went on a boat, and that Olu Banasa, there's no vehicle. Vehicles don't fly. Has ever been there. Everybody said we shouldn't get there. It's too risky. It's too dangerous. But my response was, we must also get there. And we went there. We went there. And I was very happy going there. Very, very happy. It's one of my best trips ever. Then we com uh, commenced the walk at Tokoko. We fly the roads up, up, uh, flagged off the roads. We ended up at, uh, at uh, Miata, Anna, where we then flagged off the construction of the road that is going to Nzam. Nzam happened to be the only local government headquarters that I know in Nigeria. I don't know any other that you couldn't drive to. But by the grace of God, early in this year, in this coming year, from next month, early before the rains come, we will drive happily to Nza. <laughs> we will drive to that place. Forgotten parts of Anambra State. And we go to Unanda and Eziago. Aglele. Completely cut off. You will drive more than an hour to get to that place. There's no medical facilities there. We are now building almost a semi-general hospital that we just awarded the contract on Wednesday. And then we'll have a general hospital. You know, we are very deliberate. 
some of you from the other part go to, through telemedicine will have access to a doctor. It is our aspiration. Because if we don't get the people healthy, a healthy population, you can't have a productive population without having a healthy population. And we must take health down to the grassroots, not just general hospitals or AMA to the tertiary and uh, teaching hospitals, but take them to the, where the real people are. I'm glad two weeks ago or last week, a primary health center was commissioned at Odebe. Odebe is one of the communities in Oru Banasa. Yes, at Oru Banasa, they now will have their own a health center there. At least when somebody is sick, he can go somewhere. And all of us working together, the public servants, the elected ones, the appointed ones, we are working together to deliver value. And the biggest one that we are going to do, if you talk to our economic transformation agenda, we have got several things besides fixing infrastructure. We are working on power, we are working on our ports, uh, energy source, uh, as the case may be, to improve power supply and getting gas, you know, pipelines to be able to have embedded power plants and working on Anambra uh, energy markets, as the case may be. But also, intentionally going to be developing a place now of quarantine as the Anambra's industrial city. The Anambra industrial city that will be planned with industries already signing up to come there because we must create wealth, we must create jobs. And then the new Oka, Oka 2.0 and Onisha 2.0 two brand new cities that will begin to emerge. They are being designed, they are being planned, because Nanambra, Anambra of the future. I'm about this, you know, this haphazard development that we are getting all over the place. You know, everywhere getting built up almost like a slum. We've got to get a planned, clean, green, planned, sustainable cities and communities. That is our aspiration, that's where we are heading to. You know, and in some months and some years to come, these things will start being evident to us. Yes, Anambra will be our vision, is that we want to change Anambra from being a departure lounge to becoming a destination point. That is our vision. Anambra, you are key to delivering on all of this. But I just mentioned tangentially on our human capital. Our human capital is our biggest resource. Health and education. I talk peripherally about health. When we are right here, we are in hospitals without doctors and nurses and all the paramedicals, and we had schools without teachers. And we decided intentionally that for us to build the future of this society, we must prioritize human capital. We must prioritize health and education. And that is why we've set out within the first nine months. I am told that no government has done that in the country before. That within the first nine months, governors come and they have recruitment few months to live in office. This one came and had employment in thousands few months after assuming office. And that is a fundamental difference. Because we want to be able to have schools with teachers. We employ 5,000, and the process is all going now for us to recruit even additional 3,000. Because if you want to know, predict the future, you look at the quality of teachers and the quality of teaching. You can't have schools without teachers and you hope that tomorrow will be better. It's not possible. And then for our health facilities, we are applying almost a thousand of them now. We recruited about 300 in the first instance, 300, 400 in the first instance, consultants, doctors, pharmacists, nurses, and so on. And now we are recruiting another 500 uh, or so that will get into all our primary health centers. And then through telemedicine, connecting them to call centers, 
where you can have access to doctors 24 by 7. And the doctors who did the surgery confirmed that if not for our policy, it should have cost those people a minimum of six to seven million, that kind of surgery. In fact, once the woman was admitted for surgery, the husband ran away. <laughs> but the woman delivered some children who were a little bit frail and so on, took them off the way. So they, especially the most vulnerable people. Today in Anamara, if you go to a public hospital as pregnant mother, we're going to have free antenata and free delivery. All paid for by the We must have a society that will have you. The inclusion of has exceeded our own to the best of our knowledge. Then we announced for all in our own case, not just serving public servants. What is different in our own case is that we announced for public servants and we also included pensioners that the 59,000 public servants and pensioners in Anambra, 59, 60,000 of you, that we said we are going to wire some states, even richer states, uh, given 10,000 additional cash award in Anambra, we announced 12,000 cash award to all our public servants and pensioners to go on from September to December. And this we have kept faith, and that has been implemented for the last four months. This is the fourth month, and that's the, the, uh, the ultimate of it. That's part of our package. The package for the public service. The head of service talked about the vehicles for transportation, which we got to put in order. Yes, when she was talking about more buses, I said to her, you can come, I think, there are quite a number of them I saw packed at the um, lodge between you and the head of, and the secretary to government. We then say, oh, we'll take quick one and, and so on. We come and take uh, more of them because I see some of them packed here, there, and so on and so on. And so on and, you know, um, uh, to move about. Now, I don't want to say this very seriously. The palm and coconut revolution that we have diamond plan, pay attention to this. Because a driver in the service that gets 10 to 15 of these siblings, and not all of them, three, four, maximum five years, they start fruiting, that driver will be sure to be making from the calculations I am given at today's Naira, a minimum of about two million per annum. Okay? And that's more than two million per annum in today's Naira. Um, <coughs> if you divide it by 12, I don't know what grade level that is. That's more than grade level 12, 13, even 14. I don't know how many earn more than 150,000 a month or so. To speak. Okay, now pay attention because I'm giving you a work where on when they say I am a model. This government now will model in a way a member of government in the way of Nigeria. By this we have distributed already 1.1 million siblings. And the poor household, the vulcanizer, that woman they lost by the roadside. That person named I go a hawker, we fear being seen up early. When the 10 to 15 of these siblings were not trying for the next four or five years, will be permanently out of poverty for generations. This is what we are doing. And I want those of you in service, pay attention. When this is being distributed, you must get down to your 
Because I lay here, and let me tell you the way we reach the people. We don't stay in Oka and distribute things anymore. We take them to Omona. That way, we leave no one behind. Because when you share them in Oka, you share it only a very few people. We are taking them now, the sibling distribution, we take them direct to the Omona. And I, this year's distribution, I saw many people who told me, even those in the um, outside, maybe not nine hundred pensioners, it's also a, approximately another three billion, uh, so to speak. That's what it costs for the four months. But, but we have, in addition to all of this, gone on ahead again, and as we speak, as we speak, the government also purchased 200,000 bags of 10 kg bags of rice, and they are being distributed in the 326 wards. And uh, the directive is that when you get to the ward, you must make sure that they are distributed omonna by omonna. So people can now, it can get to those who are left out there. The price paid for it is slightly less than 12,000, which was given per month. Most states in Nigeria, they didn't do the 10, 12,000 per month to have their servants. So each person, each public servant in Anambra and pensioners for four consecutive months have been receiving more than that 10 kg bag of rice each. Yes. That's what it means. That we should be able to have Wi-Fi facilities at the Secretariat here so that workers can have free access to free Wi-Fi. This is the road, a road to our digitization. You can have a base of where. I also say that pass supply to the poor holes. Wait. But who said no? And that will also, you can see on November. What about December? Yeah, I got another Christmas. I went to it for Christmas. Put on air ending. It's not going to say no. And I'm not going to For this month of December, we are going to raise it to 20,000. Ladies and gentlemen, and the SSG and the Chief of Staff, they are not going to take care of you.